Well, hello there, St. Luke's. Uh, it's great to be back with you for this midweek message. I uh, apologize, it's a little bit later than I had expected. Um, we had a bug going through our house, uh, which is a um, function of having uh, five young children uh, that I finally succumbed to. Um, we were on the mend here, but um, there we are. So I had uh, intended to give you a um, tour of the music wing of our of our fair church and an interview with Nina Rodman, our music director, which will uh, be coming sometime in the future. But that reminds me, uh, the whole point of what I was going to do that for was so that you would know that we are recruiting people for our choir. So if you can sing and you know who you are, uh, then we need you to come uh, try out for the choir. We have It's a wonderful group of people. It's an important part of our um, uh, witness and our proclamation on a, any given Sunday, and we have an amazing gift in Nina and with Dallas as our sort of um, co-music directors here, and I have um, been so incredibly blessed by the music and the um, musicianship, and uh, I'm excited to be a part of it myself, and wanted to invite you to consider uh, joining uh, the choir. So uh, that's my little PSA for the day. Well, we're also here on the other side of another national election and all sorts of discussions about the body politic and the various distinctions and divisions within the the church and the society. And as you know, we'll continue to talk about some of these uh, explicitly at the Rector's Forum. This is a, a forum that I have um, been doing in a variety of ways, uh, well, for, for the past 15 years or so, and it was always an intention to uh, to sort of help explicate, help, help situate people uh, in their sort of lives outside of church um, in a very Christian uh, perspective, in a way that we could stand um, firm on the promises of God and, as it were, understand our lives as Christian people in what's called the public square. And so... You know, I'm, I was um, struck by, uh, once again, as we saw the election returns, particularly as they involved certain uh, Christian convictions around the sanctity of human life and protections for the unborn and things, that there is a lot more work to do. That there's a lot of work, uh, both in the, well, mainly in the church for professing Christians to equip and strengthen and, and, um, and help uh, encourage them to be, as First Peter says, um, uh, prepared in season and out for a ready defense for the hope that you have in you. And that's the most important thing to remember, is that when we talk about these, um, these revealed um, uh, aspects of God uh, for the sake of the world, we are talking about hope. We're not talking about um, just simply morality, although to have a life where you believe there is a right and wrong um, is a life that can give you some hope, particularly if you're in the midst of being wronged yourself, or if you feel you have committed been have an injustice committed against you, you hope that you live in a society or a place or amongst people who will celebrate um, the the just weight and measures, as the Bible says, that there will be a place where people can um, have the hope that there would be a judge, a righteous judge, um, that there would be um, a, a justice would be served. These are hopeful things that we as Christians provide and present to the world. We present to the world um, the hope that God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, can transform the, the selfish heart into a self-giving heart, uh, the, the licentious into the, into the uh, uh, moral and upright to the virtuous. The, we pray that God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the fruits, as Paul talks about, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, these fruit fruits of the Spirit will actually permeate the not simply in the church, but through the church, out into the greater society for the good of people, whether they're Christians or not. A world where there were people who were loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, good, gentle, faithful, and self-controlled, that is a better world and a better place um, and, and one that we are presenting as a hopeful alternative to and a world devoid of those fruits of the Spirit. And so that's what Peter knew. That's what got him in part crucified upside down. You know, there's an anecdotal story called Quo Vadis, where Peter, apparently when he was being facing this persecution, I believe it was under Diocletian, I forget, but at any rate, um, facing persecution, Peter is running out of Rome. This is anecdotal, and, but it's, it's pretty funny. And uh, Jesus appears to Peter and says, where are you going? Quo Vadis, Peter. 
And Peter, um, quite rightly, is convicted and turns around and then faces his own execution, which, again, anecdotally has him crucified upside down because he was not worthy, he said, to be crucified in the same manner as his risen Lord. Well, we're not facing um, upside down uh, crucifixions uh, at this moment, but we are facing um, a culture that is uh, increasingly ignorant of the, um, the actual Christian message and people who even are purporting Christians are being um, uh, cowed and um, silenced by either their own fear of conflict or their own sense of um, inadequacy or or just just straight up um, you know kind of sinful cowardice and and that's all to be understood. That's all to be under under the the banner of grace. You know, we can run to the mercy seat every single day, every single minute, and be forgiven of all of the, the various ways that we um, fail to live up to our highest aspirations. And yet, we also can grow, and we can be strengthened, and we can be equipped, and we can be prepared, as Peter says, for the defense of the hope that we have in us. And so, I um, will have a lot more to say about this, but I encourage you to listen to the Rector's Forum, but not just the Rector's Forum. I'm just one voice, um, and I was going to leave in the show notes some links, but I don't know how to do that. Um, I might, if, if they're showing up now, it means that I learned how to do that fast enough for this to turn around and get put out. But if not, I do know how to put the little, uh, the little words up, and that's where they're going to come right here. And I wanted to just let you know of a couple of names of people that I consider to be, um, in some cases, uh, dear friends. I've met um, three of these four men, um, and uh, one of them, uh, James Wood, is coming to speak uh, during our Lenten lunch series, which we are going to have. Stay tuned for that um, during Lent. But uh, for me personally, I routinely return to um, to four voices on a daily basis. Almost, um, I listen to um, um, the, the Reverend Dr. Al Moeller, who was the president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, who I had the great joy and privilege of meeting when I was serving in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and he uh, has a podcast called The Briefing, and I want to commend that to you. And if you listen to it, you'll see, as I unashamedly uh, say. I uh, derive many of my thoughts and ideas from from some of his um, uh, his references, and so I have no I have no shame in that. I I am grateful for his guidance and leadership in that. So that's the briefing. There's another man named Aaron Wren, um, and I mentioned him in the Rector's Forum a few uh, weeks ago. Um, he has become a much he's very insightful um, Christian um, sort of uh, cultural thinker, and he has a um, you Google his name, Aaron Wren, you'll see that he is um, becoming much more um, uh, sort of known in Christian intellectual circles for a framework that he devised called the, the Negative World, the Three Worlds of Evangelicalism. And that was published in an article um, in a journal called First Things. I'll put a link to all these things if I can. So Aaron Wren and Albert Moeller. Another one is um, James Wood, Dr. James Wood, and he was a. I met him at a conference that I went to a couple of uh, about a year ago now, and uh, he has emerged as a wonderful, uh, another thoughtful, um, critical, and engaging voice uh, for Christians as they seek to um, sort of navigate this um, this world that we have been called to live in, the time that we have been appointed to witness to our Lord in, and um, I commend his writings to you also. So we have Albert Moeller, we have Aaron Wren, we have James Wood, and then finally a friend of mine that I was given the, um, the joy of meeting since we're both native Baton Rougeans, um, is Rod Dreher. So that might be a name that's familiar to you all, but he is a, a public intellectual who now lives in Budapest, I believe, and he's a Christian, and he has written um, two very meaningful books, one called The Benedict Option and one called Live Not By Lies, both of which I have and we can put in the, um, in the uh, bookstore. And I commend his writing to you. Um, and with, as with all these men, they're their own people. And so, you know, you never agree with someone um, entirely unless it's just yourself. <laughs> and then you can get corrected, uh, lovingly corrected. You know, faithful or the faithful is the correction of a friend, right? Uh, as the proverbs say. So, uh, but I wanted, uh, there are many more out there that I listen to, but in terms of our cultural engagement as Christians, these are voices that I trust and utilize myself. And once you begin listening to them, if you do, you'll see some overlap in our thinking. And that's by design, because I trust these men and I 
respect them and I, um, I'm grateful for them as they help us navigate this world. So that's where we are. Um, just a little thought today. Um, there's a lot more to be said, but um, I won't say it all here uh, <laughs> during this message. Um, I do want to leave you once again with the, uh, with the great exhortation by uh, dear Peter um, in 1 Peter uh, 3. He says, um, he says, have no fear of them, nor be troubled if you suffer for righteousness snake, but in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. Well, amen and amen. Let us pray that we would, in fact, be people of hope, and that through that hope, even in the midst of um, disagreements and contention, that in gentleness and humility, we would be respectful in our elevation of that hope, defending that which Jesus died for and gave to his church to proclaim to a lost and hurting world, that in him they could find forgiveness, healing, rest, and yes, even hope. Okay, amen and amen. We'll see you uh, Sunday, not before. Take care and God bless.